now the bacteriophages are those viruses which are causing the disease inside the bacteria therefore from the diagnostic point of view or from the control point of view we can use them for controlling the bacteria what are the different properties which are used which are uh, these bacteriophages are containing however there are also some viruses which are also causing the disease or which are also going to replicate just like the satellites and the viriors which are also present inside some viruses and we will study them later first of all the bacteriophage the bacteriophage was also known as is also known as only the phage they are causing the disease they are infecting the bacteria and they are replicating inside the cell of the bacteria and archaea this is just the simple standard shape of the bacteriophage which is containing the head and its tail so general characteristics of bacteriophage the virus architecture the virus particle is called virion it consists of the nucleic acid and surrounded by the protein coat here you can see just like the structure this is the virion virion is consists of the nucleic acid which is present inside here in the red color you can see the nucleic acid and it is surrounded by the protein coat which is also called as capsid and this is the helical in structure however here you can see the same thing this is the nucleic acid and this is the protein coat but however the structure is different and this is the structure for the same thing and it can be seen under the electron microscopy this is for this helical structure and this is for this rod shaped virus and here you can see the whole virus the t phage t4 phage and its shapes may be isometric you can see helical or the complex structure may be complex may be it contains all the structures inside it these are the tail fibers here and it is the head this is the collar and this is the body this red one is the nucleic acid and here you can see it in the electron microscope so these are the uh, this is the nucleic acid and the shape may be the icosahedral helical or the complex so there are two types of the virions one is naked naked mean that it has no envelope and the other one are the enveloped which are surrounded by the lipid membrane here is the size you can for the just for the comparison of the size of the bacteriophages you can see this is the human red blood cell the rbcs this is the just the part of the rbc this is its size and as compared to it this is the adenovirus its size is 90 nanometer similarly the tobacco mosaic virus which is causing the disease in tobacco plants which is much larger as compared to the adenoviruses and that is 250 nanometer and here you can see t4 bacteriophage which is just about smaller than the tobacco mosaic virus and this is the size of one simplest bacteria which we are which is present inside the human body inside the animal's body and it is escherichia coli so this is the escherichia coli these are the plasmid present inside and here this is the coli and you can compare the size of some viruses as compared to bacteria and then t4 phage bacteriophage which is causing the disease in the virus and this is the human red blood cell so virus interactions with the host cell the bacteriophages and its interaction and after it enters the host cell what is its uh, what is its future what it can done what, what it cannot be do after entering inside the body this is the virion we already see and this will cause infection then it will be enters inside the host cell now there are two possibilities whether there is a genetic alteration of the host cell of course the virus is present inside the host itself it will take over the machinery or maybe it is causing the disease of the host cell latent stage the nucleic acid of virus becomes a part of host cell dna and replicates as a plasmid this is the latent stage and the virus does not cause the disease at this moment and host cell is often modified and continues to multiply and a host cell will just consider that virus the parts of its own life cycle and the virus will just retain inside the body as a latent on the other side the most importantly if the virus is going to cause a disease in the host cell then the reproductive infection will occur of course and due to the because of the disease more and because of the replication more and more viruses will be produced inside then there is again two possibilities whether the virus is capable of lysis of the cell or release of the virions if it is caused the release of the virions then there will be no lysis of the cells 
However, if the lysis of the cells, then the release of the virions. These are two different possibilities. Whether first is the release of virions or first is the lysis or non-lysis of the cells. So, if the first is the lysis of the cells and then virions are released, then cell will die. And if the first the release of the virions and non-lysis of the cell, then host cell nucleolides and continues the leakage of the virion and it will be going on to uh, continue to struggle against that virus. It is the lytic cycle of some of the bacteriophages. Just taking the example of the bacteriophages, we can again see it in a little bit detail. We will start from here. This is we taken the example of the E. coli, the bacterial, and these are the plasmid bacterial bacterial DNA, not the plasmid. First step, the viruses, the bacteriophages are here containing the DNA. They will be just attached to the specific receptors on the cell wall of the E. coli, and then after the attaching. The DNA need to be entered inside the body. The penetration of the DNA following attachment, the fake DNA is injected into the bacterial cell. Of course, the capsid will stay outside the body and the DNA will just enter inside the body. Then transcription, the replication will be started. The phage DNA producing the phage mRNA which is translated to the phage proteins. Here are the DNA and RNA and phage induced proteins are already present there which is also called as the maybe the changes in the cells which is infected by the virus now it will be continued and the replication therefore the proteins different kind of the proteins will also continue it may be containing the structural protein or it may be containing the non structural proteins and the host dna will continue to be degraded here similarly the assembly the different viruses are increasing in number you see here is non-specific and here is specifically you can see a lot of bacteriophages are already here and phage components are assembled into mature virions. Now here it can go on the other way like this and it can go on this first the step 6 the release first the bacterial cell will be ruptured and the release of the infective phages to infect the other bacteria. However on the other way the head of the empty the DNA is inside the head and it will be who cause the disease and it will cause the bacteriophages to make it complete bacteriophages. The empty, empty heads of the uh, DNAs are already outside so it will come out the nucleic acid will become outside and outside it will be just uh, enter inside the head to make it just a different kind of the structures of the bacteriophages. Just to understand a little bit more better you can see the video in which you can see it later. Take a look around, from the big to the small, the visible to the invisible. Life is everywhere. The smallest unit of life is called the cell, and your body is made up of 30 to 40 trillion of them. But if you took the total number of bacteria on your body right now, that number would outnumber your body cells 10 to 1, making us theoretically 90% bacteria. Now that's a lot of bacteria, but can you imagine the total number of bacteria on Earth? It's a ridiculously high number, and we all know bacteria can survive almost anywhere on the planet. Now take that total number of bacteria on the planet and add to it every other living thing from birds to mammals, fish, add it all on. What number do you get now? What's the total number of living organisms on Earth? What if I told you that it didn't matter because there's an entity on Earth that outnumbers every living thing combined that you guys probably don't even know about? Bacteriophages. Bacteriophages, or phages for short, are viruses that infect bacteria cells. They are by far the most abundant and diverse biological entities on the planet, totaling 10 to the 31st in population. To put that in perspective, there are 1 billion times more bacteriophages on Earth than stars in the observable universe. There are 10 billion times more phages than every grain of sand added up on Earth. Lastly, if you added the net worth of Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, and Warren Buffett together and multiplied that number by a trillion, you'd still have a hundred million times less money than the total number of bacteriophages on the planet. So should we be worried with all these viruses floating around? Well, no. These viruses are very host specific, meaning they only infect certain species of bacteria cells by recognizing very specific receptors on the surface of bacteria. In other words, they're no harm to human cells at all. 
Bacteriophages were first co-discovered in the early 1900s by a British scientist named Frederick Twart and a French-Canadian scientist named Felix Durrell. These scientists noticed that clear circles called plaques were forming on their petri dishes that were growing bacteria, suggesting that the bacteria was being killed. Durrell named them bacteriophages, literally meaning bacteria eaters. These phages solely rely on random encounters with bacteria that they infect. Once they come in contact with their specific host, they attach to the surface of the cell with tail proteins and begin to degrade the cell wall. They then inject their DNA or genetic material which is stored in the head or the capsid through their tail and into the bacteria cell. Depending on the virus, the cell does one of two things at this point. If the phage is a lytic virus, the cell's machinery, including the ribosomes, will begin to make viral proteins that were coded in the newly integrated viral DNA within minutes. The cell continues to replicate the phage progeny until eventually the cell bursts open and hundreds of newly created bacteriophages are released into the surroundings, looking to infect more bacteria. If the phage is lysogenic on the other hand, it does not burst the cell open immediately. Instead, the genetic information is replicated along with the rest of the cell's genome and remains dormant. Once the conditions are right, that's when the viral replication initiates and lysis of the cell occurs. So what's the big deal? Why do we care about bacteriophages if they don't really affect us? Well, first and foremost, the potential antibiotic capabilities of these phages are astounding. In a world where antibiotic resistance is on the rise and superbugs are always a threat on the horizon, phages could offer a quick and inexpensive way to solve these bacteria problems. Treating bacterial diseases like tuberculosis and leprosy could potentially be achieved by introducing phages that infect that specific bacterial strain. Phages also have some bioremediation potential and could be used to control environmental problems in the future. Hospitals have been attempting to develop ways to use phages to reduce biofilm in hospital settings, which is becoming an increasing problem. Lastly, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and the USDA have approved several phage products including treating meat and poultry products with phages. A ton of research and studies continue to take place on bacteriophages, many of which involve their genomics. Because of their abundance, there is a humongous reservoir of untapped and unsequenced gene information that could lead to the next big discovery in science. Who knows what's to come? Now, you have seen this is a very interesting video about the bacteriophages, and you have seen about the different uh, contents of the bacteriophages, the principles that how bacteria will attack the different uh, the E. coli cells are how the, uh, the bacteriophages, the viruses will attack the uh, bacterial cells and how it replicates and then it is capable of even the um, killing the um, bacteria or maybe it is uh, possible that it maybe lives inside in the bacteria and it can destroy it.